that populates automatically the totals, right? So the totals are already pre-determined uh, for you, so you don't have to be, you know, plugging on long in every single step. Um, you have all these uh, assumptions about, you know, inventories, trade and receivables, and so on. Okay, but uh, let's uh, let's kind of understand uh, where these uh, are coming from. Okay, so let's uh, you have the 682 there. Let's redo this. What are inventories? What should inventories uh, look like? Let's go up, right? Inventories are meant to be 20% of revenue, right? So this is obtained simply by uh, you know, multiplying the assumption times the revenue forecast, okay? That's what, that's where the number was coming from, okay? Trade and other receivables, <clears throat> this is slightly a more uh, interesting approach. Uh, how, how do we get this three factor of 55? Let me just remove this, and let me show you, okay? Before that, let me remind you of a few things, right? These are receivables, right? So think of this as the receivables amount, and how do we find that? Remember how we found uh, uh, receivables in days? And this is the way we did that, let me show you. Um, it's, it goes back to the ratios that we have uh, already, um, you know, worked on before, right? In the ratio part, you may recall, we said that receivables in days looks like this. So receivables in days, right? We're just accounts receivable divided by daily sales, right? So sales divided by 365. The thing here is that we, in, in the unknown was this, right? This was the unknown. Now what happens is that now we have an assumption about the receivables in days, right? We have an assumption in days. So what we want to know is, is not so much this anymore. What we want to know is, given the assumption that we have as to how long it takes us to collect, or it will take us to collect in 2019, what will our account receivables in dollars look like? So what we really want is this now, right? As a function of our receivables, you know, day's assumption. And in order to get that, we have to multiply this times daily sales. So really, we're really reverse engineering this formula so that we can get what we want. And by the way, accounts payable in days is going to go through the same process, right? Accounts payables will be accounts payable divided by, we said, you know, cost of goods sold or cost of sales divided by 365. But now we have, we know how much we expect to take in order to, to pay, right? We're going to pay, remember we said in 10 days so we could take advantage of the early payment discount. So the unknown is actually this. So how do we solve for that? Accounts payables will be the assumption days, right, that we are assuming it will take us to pay multiply times daily costs. So these formulas are being reverse engineered so that we can get these two items, alright? So, account receivables um, first let's go back and take a look at that let's keep those for later so for us, a Account receivables in days would be equal to, remember we said, what is the assumption for receivables? Scroll up. Okay. The collection period was assumed to be 38, so that's the first one. And that's going to be multiplied times, remember, uh, for receivables that would be daily sales, right? So that's going to be multiplied times sales. So notice that what's happening here, this here's the formula, right? I just click on the first, D5, right? That's the cell that contains the assumption for the collection period. And I'm multiplying this times daily sales, which I just clicked on the sales, the revenue line. It's D25, and this divided by 365, okay? So press Enter, and that's 355 that you saw previously, okay? Um, uh, the, the current tax is left as it is, and then deferred taxes, financial instruments, cash and cash equivalents, you'll see that they're all uh, 
assumed to be uh, you know constant okay so let's take those and let's do it easier just uh, we could always just call them in together as long as we do this together uh, there should be uh, no issue right so I just copy that and then if you just drag this you, you see the bottom right corner if you just left click and just drag this it'll do exactly the same thing for all the rest okay or you can just manually uh, input them all right so we have this number populated so we have the total assets right here and uh, total uh, equity now total equity is an interesting number notice what happens right this is why we forecasted the income statement first total equity will be the previous equity plus we're we're assuming that the only new equity that comes in in the funding for now okay is remember there's, everything is kept constant that's that that's how that's the approach for getting the additional funds needed so all sources of funding are constant nothing changes right now so what is the only additional equity that can come into the company the one that comes from retained earnings so this is why you see that the new total equity for the forecast year is the previous number previous equity number plus d42 what is d42 it's the income that we forecasted and so, so we're assuming that all that new income all those earnings are retained so the new equity is the sum of the two all right okay now the answer to our question of how much funds we need in order to fund our growth is right here so we're going to assume that we're going to all the money that we need we're going to borrow through longer term debt okay so this empty space here for now it's empty um, but that's going to be our answer uh, the last thing I want to show you is the forecasting of the uh, liability side. How do we forecast the trade and other payables, right? For the payables period. Great. Notice that you have the 67, okay, right here. Um, let's see where we get this, okay? Remember, the 67, the accounts payables would be a function of our assumption. How long are we assuming that it'll take us to, to pay from now on? Then we, we said, oh, in 10 days, because we want to pay. Uh, in a way such that we can earn those early payment discounts. So, equal sign, remember? So to get accounts payables, we, um, we will say the days it takes us. So we're going to click on the cell that contains that information, that assumption, okay? And we're going to multiply that, here's the D4, right? And we're going to multiply that times Remember, cost of sales or cost of goods sold, right, divided by 365. If you don't remember, you may remind you, here it is, right, payables in days times cost or cost of sales divided by 365. So, where are we? Where is that information? We've, it's right here. Okay. You have to be careful, though, because this is already, had, this has a negative sign because, you know, it has the, 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 the coding for the fact that it's a cost right uh, so we just have to and and you know we we are just finding just the payables amount here and the current liabilities right so we want to neutralize this numbers negative sign so we're going to have to put a minus in front okay so the math can make sense otherwise you'll, you'll see an accounts payables that is negative which doesn't make sense right so remembering that this has as an assign coding already we'll put a negative sign in front and divide that by 365 okay. so this is the way uh, the formula will look right the 10 days times the cost of sales divided by 365 because the number is negative we neutralize that and we get the 67,000 all right um, borrowings are assumed to be uh, constant as we said before and so we basically have all of the information we need, right? What is our total equity and liability at this point? Total equity and liabilities would be equal to, right? Where is our total equity? Right here. Plus our total liabilities. Right here. Okay. So notice what happens. What happens is the following. Total assets went from 4,498 to 4,635. Right, uh, but notice also that the uh, total equity right and liability went from four thousand four hundred ninety-eight. So in the previous year it was at a balance. Now it went to four thousand one hundred forty-one. 
what's happening what's happening is that now the balance sheet is at an imbalance because the total assets to, does, does not equal the total equity and liabilities the reason why it is an imbalance is because you know there's a, a line missing right all of the, the additional funds that we need in order to make the balance sheet balance in other words in order to fund our growth it's missing information we don't know what the borrowings should be so uh, the, an easy way to do this is to find the external funds needed the external funds needed is just what is the difference between the total assets right now this map, and the total liability and equity that gives you 493,846 this is the external funds needed this is the amount that you need in order to make the balance sheet uh, balance